the podcast you've been looking for all along. Step into the life of urban exploration with guests from around the world. Welcome to No Tracers. Welcome to the No Tracers podcast. My name is Kay, just the letter K, and I'm your host here on this podcast all about urban exploring. Welcome. If you're new, please hit the subscribe button so you get notified every single Friday when a new episode comes out. If you guys want to actually watch this episode and see my guest's photography, you can go to the Just the Letter K YouTube channel, subscribe there, and you can watch these virtually with a kind of slideshow type of situation with the audio underneath. So if you're interested in that, or if you want to see my YouTube videos, go to Just the Letter K on YouTube. You can find me there. My guest this week is Lost Places USA. I'm super stoked to talk to him and have him share his stories with you about his urban exploration journey all across the United States. He's been to some absolutely incredible places, a couple haunted places, and he's got some stories to share. So stick around all the way to the end. If you're new to the podcast, like I said, please hit the subscribe button. And if you like the show, please leave a rating and feedback on it, especially if you're on Apple Podcasts. It helps us grow, helps us find a broader audience of listeners just like you, and it lets me know what you like about the show. If you do leave a rating and feedback, I will actually send you a signed photo print as a way of saying thank you for supporting the show. All you have to do is take a screenshot of your feedback, send it to me at no.tracers on Instagram, and I will mail you a signed photo print of an abandoned place I've explored. The next thing I need to let you know about is that I have a photography book about urban exploring. It's out now. It's called No Tracers and Urban Explorer's Diary. You can get it at notracers.com slash shop. Over at notracers.com, you can also read my blog, read my stories, see my videos, check my photography out. And there's also a transcribed version of this podcast if you are hard of hearing or if you know someone else who is hard of hearing who may want to read the show instead of listening. Lastly, our partner on this podcast is Liquid Death Mountain Water. If you're ready to murder your thirst, check out this ad. From the streams of the Austrian Alps comes a new kind of water. A water that is sure to raise you from your grave. If you're tired of buying cases of plastic water bottles that contain carcinogens and God knows what else, or if you're trying to lower your waste footprint, Liquid Death comes in beautifully rugged aluminum cans. Murder your thirst with a can of Liquid Death. Check the link in the description and use code just the letter K at checkout for 10% off your order. Liquid Death. Murder your thirst. So if you guys do pick up a case or several cases of liquid death mountain water, grab a set of koozies and then use code just the letter K at checkout for 10% off your order. Thank you guys for supporting the show by supporting liquid death mountain water. All right, without further ado, Lost Places USA, please introduce yourself and tell everyone here how long you've been exploring for. Sure. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, This is Lost Places USA. Uh, I live in New England. I'm based in Boston. And... um, and I've been exploring since I was uh, about in middle school age is when I first started. And um, I started off by rooftoping my middle school in the summertime. And uh, and in college t- age, I started hitting the abandoned hospitals um, in the area. And over the past year, I've really started to step that game up and, um, you know, hit anything I could find and travel all over the country for it. That's absolutely incredible. So take me into your first exploration ever. What was it like? What did you see? And like, what did you experience that made you kind of catch this bug? Yeah. So, um, so in the summertime, me and my neighbor, uh, when we were growing up, we used to my middle school, we realized that we could get on the roof really easily. And so we used to like ride our bikes over there. And, uh, and get on the roof and just walk around, you know, like nothing crazy. We were just, you know, just being kids. And, um, but there was always something so fun, I guess, about it in the sense of like, we were hanging out somewhere that we shouldn't. And we were kind of having this really cool experience that, you know, a lot of people around us weren't having, um, you know, even people that went to the same school as us. And when I, uh, the first, I guess, like Bando that I hit was, um, a hospital in the Boston area. Um, 
back then they had like the dorms and everything and like the cages that they kept people in and um, the administration building is still standing and me and uh me and some of my friends we 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 all been dr- out drinking one night and uh and they were like oh we should go check out this place before we all go home so we went there and like the door was unlocked and i remember going in there and the temperature was way more chilly inside than it was outside um and just this the same like adrenaline feeling going on and just creepy like of the unknown you know and knowing you were stepping into a place where a lot of history happened um and i think that's when i really fell in love with it and after that i started to pursue um finding other places in the area to uh to walk around and uh and i've been doing photography for about 10 years but back when i first started exploring i never brought my camera with me or anything i don't know i just didn't think of it um but yeah, definitely that feeling of like stepping into history into a different time zone and uh, and getting to experience that a little bit is what gave me the bug. Yeah, I love doing like the history before or after I explore a place. I think that that really solidifies like one of the reasons we do this is because we're all, you know, kind of history buffs. And, you know, we, we do live in America where we have a very young history. Like we haven't been a country for that long, like to be completely frank. And uh, I, I've spoken to a couple of people around Europe recently and, you know, they have like different architecture or, or like different types of buildings and a different history altogether for you. Like what is your favorite history of a place you've explored? Wow, that's a great question. Um, yeah, I think I think that the state hospitals have the uh, the most crazy history, definitely, um, in terms of like the overcrowding and um, and there's there's one location that I visited where um, where researchers from local colleges and uh, they actually were giving the patients their radioactive food as experiments to see what would happen, like young children. And, um, and so to step into that environment and see it abandoned, I mean, the place closed maybe like 10 years ago for good. So, you know, it's, you wouldn't know walking around it now that it's fresh, but, you know, back when I first started going there, like six or seven years ago, um, it was, you know, none of the windows were broken and everything. And I, uh, and I learned about the history after I had been there the first time. And, uh, and it was just mind blowing, you know, because it's also, I think it's really interesting to see how far we've come in medicine. I know, I mean, I know in the state of Massachusetts, at least, um, you know, we have like the department of mental health, but up until like 2010, 2011, it was still called the department of mental retardation. And so to, you know, you get to like see this history and especially in the medical field and see how we've progressed. Uh, it's really, it's super interesting. Um, you know, sometimes I like to look into the history after I visit a place just so I don't freak myself out too much. Or sometimes I, it's funny, I think I know a lot about a place and I've been there a couple of times and then people will tell me things that I didn't know about that place. And I'm like, whoa, you know, it kind of explains some of the feelings I had there. Yeah, we just talked to uh, Sam Dusky, Samantha. Uh, she is another explorer. I just did an episode with her and she's been in like the medical field for years you know and her first exploration and her her first like uh one of her jobs she had she worked at Pennhurst asylum for three years so she talked to me about like where his where our history came from and where it, where it went as far as like medical uh advances go and you know it's crazy to to hear stories like people used to experiment on patients and give them radioactive food like what that's like some nazi shit oh totally yeah and a lot of these um I know in New England, at least, a lot of these uh, these state hospitals were led by people who were eugenics advocates, which is very much a Nazi medicine kind of mindset where, like, we only want the, like, quote unquote, pure people in society and anyone who's not, you know, if whether they're dyslexic or physically or mentally uh, disabled, you know, they didn't want them to be recreating. So they would put them into these asylums and um, you know, make sure that they weren't able to reproduce or anything like that. And, uh, to kind of create a more pure society. And it's just, it's wild that that was socially acceptable. And people used to just drop off their kids or 
unwanted family members there. Um, you know, it's it's very much Nazi era thinking in medicine. And to think that that's also the pretty crazy part is to think that it was happening in America and, you know, less than 100 years ago is wild. Yeah, absolutely. So after talking about something so dark, I want to kind of switch gears a little bit. Um, can we talk about your, your favorite gear, like gear recommendations for people that are just getting into the hobby? And this could be the backpack you use, a pair of shoes, a flashlight, tripod, anything like that that you'd recommend for new explorers? Oh, totally. Yeah, definitely uh, want a flashlight, everything like that. I actually, I use a low pro backpack um, and I love it because my backpack, um, it's called the Pro Tactic 350. And I love it because the backpack doesn't open from the front like a normal backpack. It opens from the part that sits on your back. Um, you know, so that way you don't have to worry about your zippers getting caught on anything. Um, and it just feels more secure. And I can also fit room. You know, I bring my camera, a couple lenses. I can fit a flashlight in there, a water bottle. I have room for like a windbreaker. I would definitely suggest people who are just getting into exploring. I always, you know, even if it's really hot and humid outside, I always wear long pants, protects me from getting cut or ticks or thorns or anything like that, walking through the bushes. Um, and something that I always do is I always try to bring some type of face mask. Um, I think it's good to do some research maybe on the place you're going before you go there, especially when you're starting off. That way, you know, if you're walking into a place that has asbestos or mold or anything like that you know some people feel more comfortable wearing like um, a respirator mask uh, but i always try to wear something to cover my face um also just for like an anonymous purposes absolutely yeah like we we also don't know if there's going to be security cameras and i had a i actually had a dream last night that i was exploring a place and there were security cameras everywhere and i woke up and i was like damn that would suck Oh yeah, no, and it's happened. Uh, it's happened kind of recently in my area too, where uh, the police have like put on the internet that they're looking for people, and the people I think were just explorers, like visiting a place, but they had put up cameras, and um, and the people were walking around like, you know, not wearing hats or masks or anything like that, and I was like, damn, that sucks. You know what I mean? Um, just kind of a good reminder that like, you know. If you, if you are going to like go someplace without permission, um, then it's probably a good idea just to, you know, watch your back on all ends. Absolutely. And can you talk about the mentality of an urban explorer? Like for you, what makes you do this over and over again? It's not a very like normal hobby, but then again, normal is just like a setting on the dryer. But why, why do you do this? Oh, totally. Yeah. Um, you know, I... So not only do like I explore the places, but I also like to photograph them and document them. And um, and I think it's important to document these places, you know, whether it's a historic state hospital that's been abandoned or even just like a local restaurant in the area that's been abandoned that you um, find your way inside. You know, I think it's everyone who had memories at these places um, has moved on. and in terms of the state hospitals probably isn't alive anymore. Um, So any of the memories that happened there are kind of gone in a sense, but like these places are still standing. And I think it's um, important to document them. Yeah. And to like, you know, have those memories live on, Um, you know, yeah. Like not even maybe, maybe it doesn't have a lot of crazy history behind it, but it's just, it's an interesting thing to see. And, um, and yeah, and I'm, I'm really into like the documentation of it, especially if it's a historical place, um, because, you know, to kind of have that stuff be remembered and lived on um, back then, they didn't really have great documentation or they weren't trying to document a lot of things that happened there in some cases um, because they weren't proud of it. But I think I think that's probably like the most fun and exciting and important aspect of it for me that keeps me going, too. Plus, if I can get a cool selfie somewhere, something you know, that's definitely a plus. Yeah, uh, and you know, your photography really stood out to me. I love like the colors you you have in the images. I like the way you edit is really cool as well. Um, so I have this video where I got to explore an abandoned hospital. It's 17 stories tall. It's out here in Los Angeles, and we actually got let in by a security guard. He like sent us up to the top floors, which were the abandoned part. And 
I have since been emailed, contacted almost every week from different people that have either worked in that hospital or, or been patients at that hospital. Have you ever been like contacted, uh, by people that are like, Hey, I used to like work there and like shared stories with you. Cause it, that's the coolest thing for me is like people reaching out and sharing their stories from the places I've explored. It's super cool. Wow. That's incredible. No, I haven't had that happen yet. Um, you know, I've definitely had other explorers hit me up and be like, I can't believe you did that. You know, like in a, in a way, like, wow, I can't believe you hit that. You know, like that's crazy. Um, or they've, you know, it's, it's always really funny too, when you hit a place, um, sometimes I say ignorance is bliss. Like when you visit a place and you're just like chilling, you know, doing your thing. And then when you post pictures of it, people are like, wow, that place is so hard. Like blah, blah, blah. Like they watch it like crazy. And you had no idea when you were there, (laughs) you know? Um, but I've never had, (laughs) I've never had anyone that worked somewhere. I haven't had that happen yet. It's quite a trip. You know, I've had even like security, other security guards be like, wow, I commend you on getting in there because now there's like police presence that guard the place. And, you know, it's super, super hard to get into now because of like my video and Sam and Colby have been there and like uh, Trevor Costello has been there. Like all these big explorers have gone to this place. So it's it's very tightly sealed now. And like anytime people are like, yo, let's go hit that po- that spot. I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> You're like, you're like, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. <laughs> like, um, I'm, I actually, all um, I'm all set. I'm all set. There's actually a couple of um, Massachusetts State Police that follow me on Instagram um, because I went to high school with one of them and they actually like really enjoy seeing the photos of places. I mean, granted, they don't know like when they're looking at it, whether it's actually in our state or another state, you know. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty funny. Yo, you should use that to your advantage. They have the keys to all these places. <laughs> I know. I've actually asked them before, like, hey, is this place watched? Like, or how much trouble I'm like, I'm like, how would how much trouble would someone get in if they were here for photography purposes? <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, I mean it's worth, you know, trying. <laughs> so tell me about your most dangerous or your most risky exploration experience. That's a good one. I um so probably the one that comes to mind is, so the place has now been bought and it's being reopened, but I visited an abandoned amusement park, abandoned at the time, um, and me and my friend, we left Boston at like nine or 10 o'clock at night, and it was like an eight hour drive to this place. Uh, we had a ton of stuff to hit in that area, but we we got there like before the sun was coming up and on this eight hour drive, you know, like, so we're driving overnight at like three, four in the morning. Um, and the blizzard, there was a crazy blizzard. Like you couldn't even see in front of you. So we're going like 40 miles an hour down the, uh, down the highway. And the only other people on the road is big semis. And we get to the, uh, the amusement park and we were climbing the, like the big wooden roller coaster before the sun had come up and we start seeing like all these fresh car tracks um, and everything like that where cars had been before, but we were just really hoping that like, you know, since it was a blizzard that people wouldn't be there to check up on it, you know, it was kind of an unsuspecting time. Um, But it was definitely pretty sketchy because we were climbing this big wooden roller coaster that had been just sitting there for years without maintenance. And there was ice all over it and like it was windy and snowy and it was dark but we couldn't use our flashlights because we didn't want to be seen. You know what I mean? So that was probably one of the, uh, one of the craziest things I've done. Damn, that's nuts. And then what about your scariest exploration? And this could be like a run in with the police. This could be a paranormal experience if you believe in that sort of thing, uh, or anything that, that was like super scary. Definitely. Yeah. I've definitely had a few run ins with the police. Um, but luckily, um, they've always just kind of told me to leave. Uh, so that's been good, but probably like the scariest one I've had was, um, there's a, it wasn't really a state hospital, but it was definitely a place that they sent children, um, and who were like disabled in whatever way. And they had actually like murdered a couple of the kids there inside the padded rooms. And so I knew this dark history going to this place, but you know, there was no power or anything. And, uh, my dad actually drove me there. And so I'm like hopping a fence and I get to the building and I get inside and I notice that I don't have my tripod on me anymore, but I was like, you know, whatever, I'm already here. I'll just shoot it without my tripod. And, um, 
so I was walking around and there was this weird humming energy as if like the radiators were on or something, but they definitely weren't. And um, the whole time I just kind of felt like I was being watched. Like, I'm sure you know the feeling, you know, you just feel like you're, there's eyes on you. And I just had this kind of uneasy feeling the whole time. And I was there by myself. And granted, it was only like a, like five or 10 minute walk back to the car, but it was just weird. And, um, and it was a nice day outside. And when I went outside at the building, um, cause I'd kind of, sometimes I get the feeling in those places that like I've overstayed my welcome and it's time to leave. And I walked outside and it was raining like where I was standing and it was so creepy. And all of a sudden I felt really disoriented. Like I wasn't sure how to get back to the car. And, um, and there was some snow on the ground cause it was winter time. And I started to see footprints that weren't mine, like fresh footprints. And, uh, and I was like, I have to get out of here. And then when I went back, I, you know, I got reoriented. I found where the car was. And then my tripod was hanging on a tree branch, like sitting there waiting for me almost perfectly, like not on the ground or anything. And I was like, this is so creepy. Like I have to get out of here. Um, so yeah, that was probably one of the most uneasy feelings I've had in a place. Um, but actually the history behind it kind of makes sense because not only did some of the patients there die, but then after the facility had closed there was a local kid that used to go there and hang out probably like a middle school age kid and he would kind of write his feelings or like thoughts on the walls and then the police found him dead in there he had killed himself in the same place so that place is definitely haunted um i don't do like ghost hunting or reading or anything like some of my friends that explore do but i've told them you know sometimes you just get that feeling of like whoa you know i'm not here alone something is really creepy uh, so that's probably the the creepiest one I've had. Yeah, that feeling you're talking about when you're in an abandoned place and you feel like something ominous, like kind of take over, or you like you walk around a corner and you see like pitch black darkness. I call that the darkness. It's it's just like this this feeling that I think only urban explorers have experienced, and it's so unique to what we do in these places we go into, and it's it's freaking scary. <laughs> oh, totally, and um. And that's, you know, I always try to be respectful when I enter a place, you know, because it's, it's, hey, it's like, it's not my place, you know, and, you know, whether there's something or someone like a homeless person or whatever, like that's occupying the place, you know, I want to be respectful of that. Um, or if it's an energy or a spirit or something, you know, I try to just kind of set the intention that like, you know, I'm not here to cause harm. I'm not here to break anything or steal anything. You know, I'm just here to visit and um, document and then leave and so whatever is there like please don't follow me and please don't mess with me yeah i i feel the same way you know and my fiance always tells me you need to put a crystal in your butthole when you go explore these places <laughs> that's too funny yeah maybe some good advice for new explorers too would like bring a sage stick in your car so you, in case you get some weird vibes you can burn it when uh when you leave you know do some cleansing that's definitely, uh, I'm not super into the paranormal part, but that's something I definitely believe in. And I uh, I definitely have burned sage when I've come home from places before. Yeah, I, I get saged frequently whenever I, whenever I come home from these places. <laughs> My fiance always just lights it up and just, you know, yeah, circles necessary. around me and cleanses everything. <laughs> and I, I appreciate that for sure. I definitely appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what was the longest amount of time you've ever spent in one location? Wow, that's another good question. Um, I would say there's a massive um, famous abandoned hospital in New York. And, uh, and I was probably in there for like two, two and a half hours. Um, you know, some of these places are so big, it takes so long and like you can never see everything. You know what I mean? Like, they had staff at these places of like thousands of people. So, you know, when you go in there by yourself, it's like, it's a lot, uh, especially when you're exploring, you know, you're not, most of the time you don't have a map, you know, you're just kind of going down hallways and seeing what you can find. And um, so, yeah, I was probably in there for like two, two and a half hours because we had to take the tunnels to get to where we wanted to be. And it was like this whole thing, like walking across the campus. Um, I would say on average, I'm in a place for like, 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah, I try to uh, shorten kind of my time. Like... 
yeah, it kind of depends on the vibes I'm getting there. Um, you know, there's definitely some places where like you could spend all day there and probably go back another day, you know, and still not be able to see everything that you want to see. Um, but yeah, you know, I think probably like two hours is probably the longest I've spent at a place, especially, um, there's a lot of abandoned resorts in, uh, in this part of the country. So those also take a lot of time, just like the hospitals, you know, walking around the hallways and, uh, the banquet rooms and kind of seeing everything that's there. Definitely. Yeah. Those bigger places can for sure take longer. I recently did an overnight exploration. I was filming content for a paranormal investigator in this, uh, old asylum called Ashmore and they had like a caretaker. We like rented it out for the night and we were exploring and he was like doing his investigation stuff. And, you know, a lot of the things you see on TV are scripted or staged. So, so that they're more entertaining because mostly it was just us walking around for like six hours with nothing happening at all. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Those TV shows, they definitely like, they're only going to show you, you know, the eye catching things. Exactly. Exactly. So tell me about your favorite exploration to date. These are great questions. Um, my favorite one, let me pull up my Instagram feed real quick and kind of check. Um, definitely, definitely that, um, definitely that amusement park was really cool. I mean, obviously like Six Flags in New Orleans is like really famous. And, you know, that's kind of like the Holy grail of, uh, of North American urbex. Um, let's see. So, um, so one of my favorite things is locally in Boston, there's a famous theater that's below the ground. That's kind of like a, uh, it's kind of a rumor that it even exists. It's like an old opera house. Um, and I got to see that, which was really cool because they don't let anybody go down there. And it's like, it's this thing that people aren't really sure if it exists. So to find it and get to experience that was really amazing. Um, and then probably like my other favorite one was, I'm not sure if you're familiar, but the, um, there's a bunch of like president's heads that are sitting down in a field. Um, and I got to go photograph those and see those in person. They're all like 20 feet high. And um, so that was, it was pretty surreal to be standing there next to them and just see all these like decaying stone faces looking pretty much all looking at you. Um, yeah. That was probably one of my favorite things also. Yeah. I'm actually look. I was looking at those photos right before you said that. And I was like, dang, this place is crazy. Cause I've seen other explorers hit this spot and it's like, is it just like, it's like off the side of the road or something, right? Yeah. So it's, it's on someone's property, this guy. So the, the stone heads used to be in a public park and then the public park closed and they were going to like destroy them. But this guy wanted to save them. Um, so they're actually sitting in his, like, he has a massive property and they're sitting on his property and they actually do photo tours or like photo workshops kind of thing where you can pay and go look at them. But I didn't know that at the time, but me and my friend were in the area. So we went and stopped and saw them. Um, yeah. And so that was, that was pretty cool. Um, so yeah, so he saved them and he's trying to actually raise money to, um, put them back on display. I think he needs like over a million dollars or something to fix them all up and, keep uh you know put them back out in a public park somewhere wow i mean i hope he does that was definitely cool yeah that was yeah for sure and that was that was a really cool thing to see in person you know just because of um i guess also the history you know that all these people have had on the country um and seeing them like their faces in that kind of decayed state it was just it's a real experience you know oh for sure And then uh, let's talk about social media a little bit. First of all, how did you come up with your username? So I came up with my username. um, So I I like work in marketing and in branding and stuff. And I just thought that, you know, it's quick and it's concise. And like, that's what I do is I cover lost places, um, which I mean, there's so many different things that you can call that you could describe these places as like abandoned. uh, A lot of times around us, we call them fandos. Um, but really like they're, they're lost places. And, um, and when I came up with it, I was feeling a little bit lost in life. I had just like ended a kind of long-term relationship and, uh, just kind of figuring myself out after that. And, um, 
and yeah, you know, I just, I go to places that have, that were once occupied and now they're kind of lost in time. And, uh, and I mostly, you know, I haven't explored anywhere outside the U S yet. So I just said lost places, USA, no one else had taken the handle yet. And I was like, Oh, perfect. Um, yeah. That's awesome. No, I love it. You know, I I think, like you said, it's very concise and like the marketing is great. You know, the branding is awesome. And I love that you have it set as a legal service. I think that's fucking hilarious. (laughs) Yeah. So yeah, that was something. uh, Yeah. So I I have it set up as like one of those like business or creator accounts, but instead of being like artist or anything like that, I just thought it was funny to put legal service. (laughs) Um, and, And another funny thing about Urbex is like, (laughs) <laughs> because we try to all do i guess around me at least a lot of people try to be like somewhat semi-anonymous and so a lot of people when we meet each other even if we know each other's real name we just call each other by our instagram handles yeah Which, <laughs> so like there's uh you know people will be like people when they meet me they're like oh you're lost places you know what i mean or i'll meet other people and be like you know, you run into people at a place and you're like, oh my God, I follow you on Instagram. You know, you start calling each other by your their handle because you don't know their real name. <laughs> you know, that's that's kind of a funny thing about Urbex. Yeah, definitely. I love it. You know, I think it's it's hilarious, you know, and uh, what has social media done for you as as a creator, as an explorer? Have you been able to like meet up with other explorers and, and go explore together? Definitely. Um, social media is pretty like, you know, so there's a lot of hate on Instagram explorers and like TikTok explorers and stuff like that. Um, or saying that like Instagram ruined it or whatever, you know, I, and I don't want to sound like one of those people that was like, well, I was exploring before Instagram was cool, but you know, back then like Instagram was still a thing. I just didn't put it on Instagram really. Um, but Instagram is a pretty essential for me in terms of like getting involved in the community, you know, meeting friends, meeting people to explore with um, you know you kind of build relationships with people and you know it's you guys can trade locations and you build trust with people or like ask them their experience on a place if you see that they've gone there and you want to go there you know to know what you're kind of getting yourself into but also I would say um, in terms of being inspired by other people you know like when I see people the way that they shoot something or edit something Um, Or my favorite is like when I see the way that other people have photographed the same place that I've been, you know, just seeing like how different people's take on the same things. Um, So, yeah, that's that's been a big part of it, too. I actually um, on Instagram, like I hide how many likes I get on each photo, just kind of like for my own well-being. I think that sometimes like social media, you know, it becomes like who can get the most likes or doing things for features, you know, but I think. For me, it's it's been mostly about uh, meeting friends and uh, and finding out other people's experiences and being inspired and also seeing, you know, what's really doable out there. Um, you know, seeing some of the people who do like crazy rooftoping and stuff, you know, things I wouldn't even think of. I see other people doing and it just opens up my mind to, uh, to the possibilities out there. And also, you know, connecting with other explorers from around the world and seeing what their landscapes look like. Um, I like to follow a lot of the urban explorers in Europe um, because the abandoned places there are so different. And they also have, um, especially like the Soviet structures and seeing them climb like the, uh, the land movers and other things in Europe. It's, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely really important for me, um, you know, to stay inspired and find out about things. Yeah. And make some friends. Yeah, I mean, I without social media and honestly without COVID, this podcast wouldn't exist. You know, I I created it out of sheer boredom last year during lockdown. I was like, well, I I don't know if I can go exploring right now because of you know the state of the world and everything. Um, so I might as well start a podcast so I can hear the stories of other explorers. And so I have you know a huge debt of gratitude to social media, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, things like that. And I I have since been able to go meet up with some of the people I've had on this show, Abandoned Nashville, Big Bank, Steve Ronan, and uh, explore with them. 
all all thanks to this yeah great like absolutely amazing times great experiences and you know just a ton of fun and it's been really cool to like meet up with people through this show and you know have these stories be told because you know there's more to a person than just their photos on instagram and that's kind of what i wanted to dig into on this show is like who are you as a person and what drives you to do this thing that we love and know as urban exploring it's such a unique hobby for sure yeah and i think yeah i've been able to like collaborate with other um, artists like other explorers on here um yeah and just like the connections and like you know just meeting some cool people and like you know when you when you hang out with them you find out other things that you have in common and um and pretty soon like the hobby of urban exploring you know it's what you do together but you guys are actually like friends outside the hobby you know like you're there for each other for other things too and um so yeah it, instagram and the social media part has been pretty awesome yeah uh and then do you have any goal places bucket list items places you haven't gone yet that you're dying to explore definitely chernobyl <laughs> and uh i would love to see six flags new orleans but i think that they're um working on it like trying to save it or something right now and i've also heard some crazy things you know in terms of the alligators and the security there and stuff but um definitely chernobyl would be like a bucket list bucket list place yeah i uh so my dad lives overseas and in terms of the he's been there for like 10 years and uh I, so i grew up in the middle east a little bit in, uh, in australia and i'm actually headed over to the uk in uh, november to go on tour with a band as a like content creator and i told my dad i was like yo we should meet up after this tour like somewhere in europe or you know something and he was like yeah like where do you want to go and i was like what if we just went to chernobyl together like with me and my dad just going to chernobyl i love that yeah that's that's awesome um and also like like your dad thinking that that's cool like um i you know i it's funny i always like show my parents the pictures of course my mom always worries and wants me to be careful and she's like you didn't do that alone did you um she hates when i go places alone uh but yeah my dad has like driven me places before um you know and kind of been on lookout while i'm inside <laughs> um and been like super supportive of it Oh, that's awesome. So yeah. I love that it can become like, yeah, bring like your family into it too, you know? Absolutely. And I think Chernobyl is totally worth <laughs> traveling across the world for, you know, especially the history there and like documenting that before it's gone. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we just have to make sure that we're like allowed in Ukraine right now because of COVID. Like they've kind of shut everything down there, but like we're trying to figure out like, you know, uh, how we can get in and i have a friend named graham sheldon he's a videographer cinematographer whatever a sigma cine pro and uh, i've done some stuff with him before he's shot for like travel channel and discovery and like all these different uh, outlets and he actually got to go to chernobyl and film a whole documentary and had like exclusive access so i hit him up yesterday i was like hey could you like connect me with the person that took you guys in there and he was like sure here's the website here's his name like go ahead have fun have a blast he's your guy and i was like dude this is so sick like he's already helping me put the pieces together for this oh that's awesome i'm, I'm so excited for you that's so cool that's cool that you um create content for bands too actually for like my main source of work is I photograph like concerts and music festivals and stuff. Um, and I think in terms of being a creative person, you know, since, uh, since we, we, we get paid for our creative work, it's important to also have things to do um, to keep us inspired, like things that we create for fun. And that's been another great outlet that Urbex has been for me. You know, it's not something that pays my bills, but, um, but it gets me using my camera and growing in terms of my shooting and editing and, you know, especially over the pandemic, um, you know, when, when photographing concerts and music festivals wasn't an option, you know, I, I still had my camera in my hand and I was creating and, um, and I learned a lot. I've learned so much from photographing abandoned places um, in terms of how to use my camera and um, different techniques in Lightroom that I, I came back um, after the pandemic, now that things are open again where I live, um, so much stronger of an artist. Um, so yeah, forever. Uh, forever grateful for urbex um and it keeps me uh you know it's just it's a good outlet physical exercise you know getting myself out of the house and uh and creating things so i don't get too burnt out on the paid work 
Definitely. Yeah. No, it's, it's been a great outlet for myself as well. And, you know, I'm super grateful for everything I've learned in these places. And same thing for me, like I've learned so much about how to use my camera and like low light settings and, you know, do long exposure photography and things like that in these abandoned places. So it's been very, very helpful to my, my freelancing career. And, you know, I, I actually have another podcast about freelancing and when, when we first got in touch and you, uh, followed me on your other account, I was like, Oh, I should have him come on my freelancing podcast as well to talk about that. So I'll, we'll probably, uh, hook that up here after this episode. But, um, yeah, I'm definitely interested in hearing your, your stories oh, and your sure. experience as a, as a freelancer. Um, but for, for urban exploring, if you could live in one bando for an entire week, which place would it be? So that is a great question. So the place that I would pick would be Allentown State Hospital in Pennsylvania, which is no longer there anymore. And um, and I actually did not get to see it while it was still standing, which I'm kicking myself for because I knew about it for a couple months before they demolished it. And I saw people hitting it and I was just, I never went down there, but definitely Allentown State Hospital. It was a Kirkbride. It was beautiful. Um, and it still had power and everything. So it was it was ready to move in. <laughs> yeah, I've heard a lot about Allentown. What about, have you ever had any of those places where you, uh, have you ever had those places where you like, you knew about it, but you never like sent it and then it gets demolished or something and you're like, no, why didn't I do that? Yo, all the time. It's, it's such a frequent thing. And you know, like, like we actually have a couple places here in LA. Uh, I know I'm down in San Diego, but like uh, most of the spots are like up in LA. Uh, so we had this abandoned SWAT team training facility. It was like seven floors high and like full of like wooden rooms that they had like constructed as like a part of training. And there were still like uh, the target, like the shooting targets that were like strewn across the floor and stuff. And uh, a friend of mine hit me up one day during COVID and he was like, Hey, so we haven't seen each other in like a year. Do you want to go hit this new spot that just opened up? Like it just barely opened up and people are tagging it, covering, covering it in graffiti outside. There was like a, a burned out bus and a burned out airplane that they were like training in. And, uh, I was like, yeah, let's, let's go. Like I'll drive up there right now. Like I'm so down. So drove up to LA, hit this spot and, you know, a couple weeks later, I'm driving through LA, going back to San Diego, and I drive past it because it's literally on the side of the freeway. Like it's it's this giant building just right off the freeway, and they had covered all the windows, painted the entire thing white, and sealed it up. And so it's spots like that where I'm like, man, I'm glad we got to explore that. Like I'm so glad we got to get in there before they shut it. And wh while we were there, we were like. We had explored the building, we left the building, and we were outside checking out the bus and the airplane, and then all of a sudden, like, four fire firemen, like, come walking through, and my friend was like, yo, I think the cops and the firemen are here, and I was like, oh, shit, like, I'm glad we're not in the building, so they come over to us, and they're like, hey, like, what are you guys doing here, and we were like, oh, we're <laughs> just photographers taking some photos, and I was like, I'm working on my second photography book, and I showed them my first photography book about urban exploring, and I was like, we just do this as a hobby, blah, 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 and they were like, okay, just be careful, and they, like, let us go on our way, and, you know, it's, like, experiences like that that make me have hope for, for, like, exploring more and doing this, like, I feel like if you're, one of my questions for you is actually, do you have tips on how not to get caught? And I think one of my tips is like, if you have like a photo print or like a photography book or something, put it in your backpack. And if people stop you, like show it to them. And then if, worst case, like you hand them a photo print and they leave you alone because they get something out of that exchange, you know? Totally. Um, I think in terms of like, not getting caught or like if you do get caught not getting in too much trouble is to just like always check your intentions before you go somewhere and like make sure that you have good intentions like for me I know when I go somewhere like you know I'm just going to like document it you know I don't have um like spray paint or anything in my backpack and uh or anything like too malicious and um you know so I've actually um I actually did get caught at a, at a place in New York. Um, but the, the lady, when I came outside the, the like the state trooper, she was like, you weren't inside, were you? And I was like, no. And she was like, okay, good. 
because that's trespassing and I was like oh yeah no I was just outside but she like knew I was in there because she saw me in there and was like banging on the windows um but you know like I (laughs) yeah but I like had my camera backpack and like a tripod and stuff you know and I think that the majority of times if you um you know as long as you don't um you know act too sketchy and like you're there with like good intentions you know like you're not trying to like burn the place down or anything then they'll probably just let you off with a warning or you know just just tell you to leave uh that's that's been my experience at least yeah definitely and my last question for you is what is something you know now that you wish you knew when you started exploring that's a good question um something i wish i knew when i started was that like you know i'm I'm capable of pretty much anything I put my mind to, you know, whether that's like a long drive, um, you know, conquering of my fear of heights, you know, I used to be so like deathly afraid of heights, even climbing a ladder would scare me. And, uh, and now I'm like hanging out on rooftops or like, you know, doing crazy things to get into buildings. And, um, you know, it's that, you know, we, we really get to like choose our own path. And I think that urban exploring has really opened that up to me. Um, you know, is that one day I can wake up and like drive someplace and go see things, um, you know, and go experience things. And like, and that's a choice um, that I get to make every day. And, um, and yeah, that like, even when you're really afraid to do something, like, I, I don't think you should act reckless, right? But like, you know, you, you can really accomplish almost anything that you put your mind to, um, you know, it's good, it's good to have a healthy amount of fear. But um, but if you can learn to like kind of use that to your advantage in a sense, then like you can accomplish crazy things, you know. And uh, and in the beginning, I was very scared and timid, which is like understandable. And I think we all kind of start out that way. Um, but yeah, just like believing in myself, you know, Urbex has given me like a lot of self confidence and um, and taught me a lot of patience and problem solving skills. You know, you don't always get something on the first try, but it's okay. You know, you can always try again. Um, And yeah, you know, just like a heightened sense of my surroundings and being able to trust myself mentally and physically and, uh, and gain confidence as I've gone through these different experiences has probably been like, you know, one of the biggest things I've learned. And so something I wish I knew in the beginning was that like, you know, some, some things aren't out of my league, you know, like if I want to do something and I plan it and I think about it, like I can probably, I can probably pretty much accomplish it. Absolutely. That's amazing. Like I love hearing, that's my favorite question to ask people in any capacity, whether they are an urban explorer, they're a freelancer, they're an entrepreneur of any kind, CEOs, like anybody I meet, I ask them that question. Like, what is something, you know, now you wish you knew when you started, because it's like one of those one of those like big questions that we don't often think about. And so I love, I love hearing the answer to that question. So uh, thank you for coming on the show. If people want to follow your journey, where can they find you online? Drop your social media. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, on, on Instagram at lost places, USA is, uh, is where you can find me. I, um, I post like almost daily on there, um, different explorers, different things, maybe just on my story. But, um, you know, as concerts have picked up, I've, I haven't had as much time to explore, but I'm kind of changing that because I realize, you know, I still need this in my life. Like, I love it and I love the friends I've made from it. So I need to keep seeing them. So yeah, Lost Places USA is where I'm at. I'm usually like down to collab with people or, you know, try something new, whether that's like photographing a person at a place or, um, or traveling to see something, you know, I'm always down to, always down for new experiences, I believe experiences over everything you know i'm only here once and i want to experience and try everything once awesome man thank you so much for coming on the show i really appreciate it yeah thank you so much for having me and uh, i can't wait to share the link with my friends so they can listen all right guys that was my episode with lost places usa if you want to check out his photography i have put his links down in the description If you guys are interested, I am actually going to be having him on my other podcast called Project Freelance, where I talk to guests about their freelancing careers as photographers, entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, 
digital artists, musicians, all different types of people. So if you're interested in that, go check out Project Freelance. I'll put a link in the description for you. Thank you guys for listening to another week of No Tracers. My name is Kay, just the letter K, and I'm your host here on this show all about urban exploring. I'll talk to you next week for another one. Stay strong, keep enduring, go out, go explore something, and remember, leave no trace. Thank you.